one is actually the one person in the world with the unilateral ability to end this war. And since he does not appear willing to negotiate seriously at this stage, the question becomes, can anyone in Russia make him? At least roughly 14,000 anti-war protesters have already been arrested in Russia, and almost all of Russia's independent media and social media has either been shuttered or muzzled, unable to report the reality of what's happening in Ukraine, unable to even refer to it as a war. Any truthful information that does get through is quickly spun by Russian-controlled state media. Just yesterday, a Russian airstrike hit a maternity hospital in the Ukrainian city of Mariupol, killing two adults and one child and wounding 17 others. But in the Russian press, the story is either that the hospital was empty or more nefariously, that the Ukrainian military did it themselves, firing artillery strikes on their own civilian infrastructure. Now, with state media lying this aggressively and all alternative sources shut down, how can the Russian people be expected to oppose what Putin is doing, let alone voice that opposition? Well, Russian opposition figure Vladimir Karamursa thinks this question is key. Karamursa has been such an effective force in resisting Putin in Russia over the years that the Kremlin poisoned him not once, but twice to try to get rid of him. This was Karamursa's advice in the Washington Post this week, quote, as the world's democracies rightly prioritize helping Ukraine withstand Putin's aggression, they should not overlook the other important task, helping Russian citizens gain access to objective information about the war and the Putin regime in general. Democratic nations must step up efforts to provide news coverage for Russian citizens in the Russian language. Western leaders are learning the hard way that the instability, repression, and conflict Putin is causing will resolve only when he is out of power. Only Russians can and should achieve this. The least the world's democracies can do is help them get access to the truth. End quote. Joining us now is the Russian opposition politician Vladimir Karamursa. He's in Washington this week for meetings with members of Congress, a trip that took him two days to accomplish because of the closed airspace on the journey to D.C. from Moscow. Uh, Mr. Karamursa, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. You just left Moscow so much a few me. days ago. We understand that Russian state media is spinning this war. Help us understand, Vladimir, as you often do, how effective that spin is. What, what percentage of the Russian population buys into what the Putin government is saying, especially since they're seeing inflation and high interest rates and, and all sorts of other uh, effects to their daily life? Uh, well, Ali, you just mentioned the word uh, war. Just for doing that, you could get up to 15 years in prison. And the fact uh, that there is a war. You know, it's it's a totally Orwellian reality that we're living with uh, in Russia. George Orwell's 1984 really did come to life uh, under Vladimir Putin's regime. You know, remember, war is peace, uh, freedom of slavery, uh, ignorance and st strength, a famous line from, uh, from Orwell's novel. Um, it, it is astonishing and, and frankly makes me uh, proud that at the backdrop of that there are thousands of people all across Russia, as you've just shown to your viewers a few moments ago, who have been protesting, going out all over the, uh, on the streets all over the country, cities and towns across Russia, to say that this is not our war. These war crimes, these crimes against humanity that the Putin regime is unleashing uh, on the nation of Ukraine in the heart of Europe for the past two weeks, those crimes are not being done and not being committed by the people of Russia. Uh, you know, everybody's rightly focusing on, on the war of aggression, the actual war that Vladimir Putin um, has been uh, leading against Ukraine. Uh, but there is another war uh, that the Kremlin regime has conducted very swiftly and very successfully, and that has been the war on what remained uh, of independent media in Russia and what remained of Russian civil society. Literally every single major independent media outlet in Russia has been shut down in the past two weeks. This includes the legendary Echo of Moscow radio station that for years has been uh, synonymous with quality independent journalism uh, in Russia. Um, we have people already, dozens of people who have been indicted uh, under this new uh, clause, under this new so-called defense of speaking out against the war. This includes today, for example, a Russian Orthodox priest 
in the region in Kostroma are being charged and fined for speaking out against killings, against wow. the war in his sermon in church. That is now outlawed in Vladimir Putin's Russia. And so the astonishing and mind-boggling fact, however incredulous it sounds, is that most people in Russia today do not even know that there is a war that Vladimir Putin's regime yeah. is uh, conducting against Ukraine. If you watch Russian state television, you live in this imagined reality where it's the West uh, and, and the Ukrainian government that are to blame for, for the conflict uh, and what Putin's military forces are doing are conducting a so-called targeted special operation that does not in any way affect civilians. Well, I think people who have been watching your channel and other world media and seeing the horrific images coming out of Ukraine uh, can be the judges of that for themselves. And given the the, uh, the the threat to opposition leaders like yourself, to uh, to journalists, uh, to protesters, it's remarkable. Something you told me years ago that always sticks with me. Don't don't talk about Russians. Talk about the Russian administration, the Russian government, the the Putin regime, because Russians are not on side with this thing. But you advocate something interesting. You advocate for for Western countries, democratic nations, to produce more Russian language journalism that shows what's actually happening in Ukraine to burst the Russian state media's fake news bubble. But how does that actually happen? How do Western outlets actually get that kind of reporting to the Russian people now that the go Russian government has blocked out or, or shut out all opposing press? Well, look, if this was done back in the Soviet times when those Western radio broadcasters, you know, Radio Liberty, the BBC Russian service, Deutsche Welle and so on, beamed the radio signal through the Iron Curtain to reach millions of of listeners inside the Soviet Union and, uh, you know, Soviet dissidents and Western analysts alike um, emphasize just how important that voice of truth, that voice of objective information was in delegitimizing the totalitarian regime in the eyes of its own people and eventually leading to the collapse of the communist system and the end of the Cold War. Um, you know, I think by now, better late than never, as they say, hopefully it is clear to the free world, to Western democracies, that the only way to resolve the situation that has led us now to a major land war in the middle of Europe uh, is to make sure that Vladimir Putin is no longer in power. You know, for years and years, we in the Russian opposition have been warning Western democracies just where this appeasement of Putin will lead to. And, and for all those years, unfortunately, Western leaders chose to look the other way. Western countries and Western financial systems and Western banks continue to essentially enable and bankroll uh, the Putin kleptocracy. And, and this is where it led us. And I really wish we had been wrong on this. But now, at least now, it should be clear to the civilized world that the only solution to this uh, is for political changes in Russia. Now, needless to say, political change in Russia can and should only be accomplished by Russian citizens. Nobody advocates any kind of regime change from outside or any other nonsense of Kremlin propaganda would have you believe. But I think it is important that the free world helps the Russian people get access to the truth about the horrific crimes that the Putin regime is committing supposedly on their behalf. It is important that the Putin kleptocracy and the Putin oligarchy is finally and fully cut out from the global financial system. We are seeing this. There's more that needs to be done. And it's also important yeah. to send a very clear message that the Western world and the United States in particular sees Vladimir Putin exactly for who he is. Not a legitimate president, not a democratically elected leader, because of course he isn't, but as an unlawful, illegitimate usurper. There's a very important congressional initiative uh, here in the United States. It's called House Resolution mm -hmm. 806 that was introduced uh, on the bipartisan uh, level a few weeks ago uh, that calls for derecognition, official derecognition of Vladimir Putin's regime by the right. United States in the same way that Maduro's regime in Venezuela and Lukashenko's regime in Belarus and others are not recognized. I hope to see this initiative pass swiftly, all the more added urgency now, as Vladimir Putin is conducting war crimes and crimes against humanity at the heart of Europe.